Welcome to Crusader King. So this isn't the Dwemer mod, and I'm going to explain what's going on uh, with sort of the next month on the channel. I've sort of got a plan in action. So this is what I'm going to be calling uh, Series B, and then we're also going to have Series A. So Series A is going to be a heavily edited sort of fantasy mod, the usual style that you've seen in, you know, the Game of Thrones series and whatever the hell came before that. So you sort of standard content you'd expect to see from the channel. But Series B is going to be... Um, not so heavily edited, in fact, very little editing. I'd say 99% of the time it will remain unedited, besides maybe intros and outros. And it's going to be more traditional CK2 content, so more... Uh, so this would be for things like um, the base game, if we ever go back to the base game for whatever reason. CK2+, Plus, HIP, uh, When the World Stopped Making Sense, things like that will go into this series. I don't want to say more realistic, because let's be honest, they never end up being realistic on this channel. But for mods that sort of take place on planet Earth is probably the best way to look at it. Sort of traditional history mods instead of the crazy fantasy stuff. So this is Series B, as I said, and this will be the sort of... Um, no edited, regular old CK2 in a sort of traditional Let's Play style. So I thought that'd be kind of a nice little change there. Seeing as I know a lot of people don't know the fantasy worlds or don't like the fantasy worlds and want to see more traditional, uh, you know, CK2. And want to see it done in a more traditional style. Because I've heard a lot of people saying, hey, maybe do less editing. So that's what we're going to try and do. I'll see how it goes for a month. And if it's good, we'll stick with it. But I want there to be more clear divide. I tried doing this before, two, two CK2 series simultaneous. But I want there to be a more clear divide, hence a whole Series A, Series B type thing. Welcome to Series B. This is Historical Immersion Project, which recently got updated. And a lot of people were asking me uh, to check it out to see what I think of it. And I've played HOP a lot before. Um, I don't really know that it's my type of mod. Historical Immersion Project should give it away by itself. Sort of betrays the point of the channel, right? Um, all about historical accuracy, immersing yourself in the time, that type of thing. Hence the name. Um, not really something we do here. We don't do that here. But we can sure as hell give it a go and try and break it wherever we can. So I'm going to start on the earliest stage here. Because I thought to myself, as much as I love playing Vikings, Vikings are probably my favourite start date you know, around Scandinavia in the UK. I've never actually played as one, I don't think, on the channel. I don't think I've done one at all. I think we did a few episodes getting achievements as um, Sigurd Ring. But besides that, there was actually no other time I can think of that we played Vikings. So, I think that's going to be the plan for this campaign. A classic, good old-fashioned CK2 Viking playthrough. Unedited, uh, unchanged, ready to go. I have a pretty hefty mod pack. It's not just HIP. Um, we've got some artifact mods, we've got some uh, trait mods, we've got some obviously event mods all that are included with HIP Because HIP itself is more of a mod pack as well So this is going to be quite a dense series, I think we've got a lot to see Plus obviously all of the Holy Fury changes which I have um, still not a huge amount of knowledge on Because I haven't really played much of Holy Fury So where do we want to start then? Um, generally it's going to be somewhere in Scandinavia or somewhere in the UK at the start date It's 867 um, Honestly I was immediately drawn to Jorvik because Jorvik is quite a fun... Um, I suppose difficult is the right the right way to say it. I mean, you are starting immediately at war with tens of thousands of people in an attempt to take as much of the UK as possible. So this might be a fun start, immediately carving out a kingdom as a duke. Could be pretty good. Now, there is also the classic uh, Hastine of Nantes start, which is incredibly difficult. That one is really, really hard, and I think I would probably get thwomped pretty quickly. Is it worth a go? Maybe trying out Hastine? Um... Man, I feel like I'm going to regret this idea, but it's kind of taken me a little bit. I think it's fun. And again, it's one of the hardest starts in CK2, because obviously you're a single Viking ruler, um, surrounded by Carlings and Carlings and more Carlings. Fuck it, let's do it. Let's play as Hastine of Dantes. I originally was going to play as Yorvik and make the UK. No reason we can't do it as this dude. That that I think would be pretty fun. You know, like a, like a very, very early 1066 here. Let's do it. All right. Ruler designer. Obviously, we're not going to play as Hastine of Nantes, because he's a little bit boring there. Uh, we're going to make our own boy. Because I think if there's one thing I'm good at in CK2, it's character designer. Um, oh, these faces look a little bit strange. They're a little bit uncanny valley, aren't they? All their faces kind of a bit... What's the word for it? Grainy? They all look like they've had plastic surgery. What is going on with that? Obviously, this is uh, part of uh, HIP, making all these uh, face packs look a little bit different. I forget the actual name of the mod. Um, it's like Armoire, something Armoire. I don't remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter too much. Um... I'm just going to random, and then I'm going to stop randomly on a dude, okay? And we're going to hope that he's good, because I'm not going to customize him beyond that. Ready? Three, two, one, now. Excellent. He's perfect. He looks like Tormund Giantsbane from uh, from Game of Thrones there. Incredible. The flag, you guys know me. I'll, I'll design my flag in a second. Eagle Fruny is a terrible name. And I can come up with a better name. Otter, that's a good start. I think, uh, how, do you, how do you spell Otter? 
Otter? Otter of, uh, there's a terrible name as well. Is that how you spell otter, as in the small, uh, aquat otter hammer? No, it's close, but it's, it's almost perfect. What about otter smasher? That's a good name. That, that's a pretty Viking name, I think. Culture, um, Norun. I assume that's just Northman. Um, we could alter that, but I don't think it makes it any difference. I assume all of the, yeah, it's all just generic. So this would be the equivalent of Norse, and then you've got Swedish, Norwegian, Danish, um, Icelander, etc., etc. Yeah, that's not too much of a big deal. Do we have character designer unlocked enabled on this? Uh, I haven't turned it on. Oh, interesting. See, I have not turned this on. This is not something I've done, so it must just come with this by default. So we get to go pretty hard on our character if we want to. Um, yeah, and then they've also added, if you look here, plus years, so that you can make literally whatever character you want. That's kind of cool. Um, we'll definitely be doing that. I don't think we've ever played with Ruler Designer Unlock turned on, so this will be fairly interesting, I think. Otter Smasher. Religion is Asa True there, which is basically just Norse, right? Um... DLC, new, we can play as Ma'at, which is uh, what the, I believe what the sort of, um, th there's a DM sort of equivalent character, um, a driving force between a lot of the events, or behind a lot of the events, which is, um, i trying to think of the name of the character, we'll see it when we get in game, Isis, I think it's Isis, you know, like the old Egyptian god, I think that's her religion, so best not pick that one. Um, some new religion icons as well, that's quite nice to see. Um, do we want to pick any of these? Probably not, I think we are going to stick with the classic sort of Norse Asa true there. Um, yeah, that's fine. That's, that's cool by me. That's fine. All right, let's go through this ridiculous list of traits. I'm going to try and specifically not make someone too overpowered because that sort of defeats the point of the whole historical immersion aspect of things if we're going crazy. Now, one mod I have found and installed um, deep in my own mod archives because it's impossible to find out the Steam Workshop. The author has taken it down for whatever reason, so I can't unfortunately offer a link to this one. I was, I'm also not intending on, you know, redistributing it because I think that's a, that's a little bit rude. Um... There is the additional uh, congenital traits mod, which I do have installed, which basically adds several different layers. You guys might have seen me play it before. Several different layers of... Um, so you know how in the base game you have um, imbecile, then after imbecile is slow, then after slow you get nothing, then after that you get quick, and then after that you get genius. Well, it sort of fills in the gaps between those, so you can level up... Um, I don't know, it, it, it sort of just fills out. You'll, you'll see it here. So you got plus four from that one, plus five from this one, plus six from this one. Then if we scroll back a little bit, we'll be able to find like plus three, plus two, plus one, etc. Um, it just basically allows for more varying genetics, which I think is cool. Because in the base game, it's like, if you're a genius character, is my son going to come out genius or is he not? You know, well, even then it's only like, what, a 15% chance to inherit. In this though, we've got like, there you go, astute, which is plus three. We've got wise, which is plus five, sort of the equivalent of genius. That's why I quite like this mod, because it gives it more variation, it makes characters more unique, it gives them more strengths and weaknesses, and of course there's more chance of just permutations randomly appearing, um, which I think is literally the definition of that word, um, as a result of there being just way more traits. So this is a really, really great mod, and I really like it. Um, we'll start from the bottom, we'll work our way up, seeing as a lot of the congenital traits are near the bottom here. So, are we going to be a typical Viking, angry... Um, Raider, Berserker, I mean, we could literally be a giant, that's cool. This character is gigantic, almost as if, well, I mean, gigantic for 867 is what, like 5'8"? Um, yeah, that could be pretty fun. That's, that's not too bad. We've got Tall as well, so they, they're not ridiculously powerful. Considering that it's 20 age for 3 martial and plus 3 co personal combat, that's pretty terrible. Um, that's actually really terrible, given the new personal combat system. I almost feel as if, oh, you know what it would be? These traits probably aren't compatible with the new system. I didn't even think of that. So, in fact, a lot of them are going to be nerfed off the get-go, which is probably for the best, considering that, you know, we have infinite age to work with otherwise. So, that's that's fine. Um, things like, you know, strong, though, is going to work as intended. Uh, martial plus three, fertility, health, personal combat, still not working, but the rest is fine. Um, interesting. So, we've got, like, quick, perceptive, astute, dominant voice there. Martial plus three, vassal opinion plus ten. Would our guy have a dominant voice? I kind of want to go a little crazy with this dude. You know, make a make a non-traditional Viking. Go for like um, tranquil voice. Yeah, this is nice. Go for a diplomatic Viking, and then you know maybe work our way through up up through Ireland, go through the UK as a nice diplomatic fella. Have other people fight for us. That's a good idea. I like the idea of some sort of like Viking smooth talker. Let's do it. Let's do it. That's that's cool. Um, we've also got things like Agile, Ambidextrous, which are, of course, just bonuses to, uh, personal combat. I will edit these, um, in between episodes. I'll just put a zero on the end of all of them to actually represent. So it should be, like, personal combat plus 20 in the modern times right now. They basically times everything by a factor of 10. Um, Fruitful. Uh, there are other 
So we've also got calm voice as well, which we could give. Yeah, he's calm, calm and tranquil. I think that's our dude sum up to, summed up to a T. Obviously, that's not him. We're that uh, ginger fella. Tall, uh, energetic, perceptive. Perceptive seems appropriate. I like this kind of... Um, he's not necessarily underhanded, but he's a very good people person. I think that sums our guy up. Although he is a formidable fighter. Um, but is that nerfed in this one, though? Personal combat skill plus 60. Master diplomat? Yeah. I think get rid of formidable fighter. Go for master diplomat. Let's stick to the character. He would be groomed, I think. I think he'd be very well groomed. He, he's someone who cares greatly about what people think of him, and that's why people like him so much. Um, obviously, all these traits we will try and get in-game, so I'll ignore the majority of these as well. Um, yeah, I don't particularly want this dude leading troops. We'll have so many martial characters. You know, I think it'd be kind of a nice change to play a diplomat for once, or like a, like an intrigue-based guy. Um, Gregarious, I think, suits him quite well. Um, just, I think, would also suit him quite well. He's already a very powerful character, so I'm not going to go too crazy with this one. Um, what do you think? Like, charitable? Maybe some people will look down on that. That's not so good. But, lustful, everybody's got to have a vice, right? And it just happens that this dude is keeping the game from ending. That's his, that's his vice. That's my vice as well, to be honest. Um, appealing. Do you want to see plus one? Attraction opinion plus 30. Do you want it to be like a beautiful, like, Prince Charming style dude? Uh, absolutely. Where are those traits then? We should have prolific. This character was born to be prolific. Fertility plus 30%. Fuck it. He's going to be the most attractive most attractive calm voice man who's ever lived. He's going to make a lot of enemies because of that, I would think. There we go. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Um, so, prolific, immaculate. We've got all of these really nice traits. Uh, I feel like he needs a downside, though. He needs to have a dark side to him, or at least something kind of wrong with him. Um, what do we think? Gonorrhea. His, his secret all along was gonorrhea. Maybe possessed. Maybe he's actually possessed by a very smooth-talking demon. That could be pretty good. Yeah, that's his backstory. There you go. Otter. Otter smasher was a simple Viking man who one day was spoken to by potentially Loki, let's be honest, possessed by Loki, uh, who, being the great diplomat Loki is, has managed to talk his way up to a, a decent... I like the idea that he didn't conquest Nantes. He just agreed to... Uh, that the French king liked him so much, he gave it to him. He gave it to him. That's his backstory there. Um, so, inherited by the spirit of... or inhabited by the spirit of Loki. That's pretty good. Um, great eminence as well, obviously. 26 diplomacy is nuts. That's absolutely insane. I love it. Okay. Now we need a good flag. Oh, the flags are a little bit limiting. Oh, that's sad. God damn it, I can't make my usual shit. That's pretty cool. Can we make that black and white? And then it's like an optical illusion. There we go. Oh, it's a little bit disappointing, huh? Um, what have we got then? Let me let me try and find a decent one here. Oh, those are cool. I like that. That that's just kind of a nice flag by itself. You know, like the gilt sort of black uh, the black snake there. It's kind of cool. Uh, probably the Jormungandr. What else have we got? Just lots of. Uh, just gen generic sort of Nordic designs here. Some of oh, I like the crow. I like the golden crow. Or the owl. That seems more appropriate. He's always watching. That's cool. I like that one. Nice. Otter of Nan Na 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 Ned. Nantes. We'll call it Nantes for, um, for posterity's sake there. A smooth-talking, possessed Viking. I think this is going to be the beginning of something beautiful. Oh, God. I've got to edit all of these rules now. Um, in fact, they should be more or less right. I don't want to mess with it too much. Um, a historical du jour empires. A lot of people ask me what rule set I go for, so I might as well just leave this turned on. Um, and you guys, I, I won't edit this out in particular, so you guys can actually see what I'm playing with. And we'll call this episode zero or something. How about that? My usual trick. Um, a historic du jour empires off. Only the HRE, Byzantine Empire, Arabian Empire. This will also be good for me to read through this so I can learn it. Um, so only the HRE, Byzantine, Arabian, and Persian Empire will be du jour. They will be formable, but will first be titular. That's interesting. Right, okay, or we can turn it on, um, at which point it will try and replicate the base game so you get like Spain, Spain, Britain, Arabia, so non-historically existing empires. We'll just go with what they think. Historical outcome promotion, so you can try and have, you know, full passive sandbox, or it can try and fire in-game events. You know, like Charlemagne in the base game obviously has events to try and get him to take the whole of the empire, and obviously like the, the Italian marriage, things like that. Um, gender equality default, no extra CB cooldowns. Some non vanilla cooldowns are enforced upon Cassus Belli usage for Holy Wars for balance, better gameplay pacing, and more historical outcomes. Well, let's go for that, because it's the mod experience. I want to see what they've got to offer. Um, patricians may not use rapid expansion such as Holy War. That seems fair. That, I've always thought uh, Republics were a little OP in that sense. Titular title creation, kingdoms and empires, non-dynastic succession. I've put a link, I'll, or I'll, I'll pin a comment where you can skip all this if you want to. Um, non-dynastic succession. Interesting. I might actually do this, just because I think it will give us a nice little gameplay. So, non-dynastic succession, if you die and you don't have somebody to succeed you, you play as that the next character, whoever your heir happens to be. The interesting thing you can do with this is you can matrilineally marry and then 
die and still play as your child, if that makes sense. Somebody who, who would not normally inherit, or normally you would get game over, you can actually play as them. So I, I might do that. Um, players may create custom kingdoms and empires. Um, that's fine. AI may only do so if an alternate setting has been disabled. Okay, sure, whatever. Merger epidemics, dynamic, minor epidemics, default. That's fine. Um, <clears throat> Mongol invasion, random. Sunset invasion, random. Sure, why not? Um, x slave Independence Limited. I quite like that one. Um, be removed. So, x slaves of independent rulers will be removed at succession. Unless they are connected by a naval path or part of the characters to draw territory. I actually kind of like this being enabled. Because historically, x slaves broke off all the time. <clears throat> America. So, I'm, I'm kind of happy to have that one turned on. Um, Chinese invasions, all that's fine. Chinese interactions, anyone. Ah, uh, man, I, I do like having this turned on because I feel like it's a bit pointless having Jade Dragon if you're not going to have China turned on for everyone. Plus, it always gives us something to do. And if everybody's got it, it's on equal footing. Oh, not only that, but I've also disabled India. So this actually might be essential. Otherwise, China is just not going to exist. Okay, I'll leave that one on and we'll see how it goes. Border to people's on. Your cast is Belli on. Devil worshippers, default. Yep. Religious cults, default. Historical Turkic conquerors. Non-epidemic diseases, default, it's fine, movement lock is on, siege events on, siege assaults on, defensive packs off. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of defensive packs, it doesn't really make much sense that, you know, all the Muslim nations in the world were banned against me just because I've done too much conquesting in, say, I don't know, Scandinavia, for example. I, I've never particularly liked it. Also, like, rivals joining pa packs with one another, it, ju it just never made sense. Um, supernatural events unrestricted for obvious reasons. Absurd events, interesting. Um, unrestricted as well. I think that's a feature of Holy Fury, but don't quote me on that one. Um, does your drift? Fine, fine, fine. I won't go through this too much longer because it's actually driving me to boredom. Diplo range on, provincial revolts on, reformation on, dueling default. Could go unrestricted. Um, that's kind of fun. A little bit too gamey though. You can, you can abuse that quite a lot. So I might turn that off again. Um, multiplayer invasions are relevant. Yep, this is good, this is good, this is good. Childhood focus alerts, minimal, because I hate it. Crusader, yep, that's fine. Different crusades, I don't give too much of a shit about that. Child of Destiny, on. Can we have that, like, unlimited? Nope, that's on, fine. Northern Crusade, on. Hellenic Revival, on. Blood Splatter, on. Perfect, right, let's save this rules as slot zero, just in case it breaks horribly. And let's dive right in as our, our possessed silver-tongued fella. Here he is, Otter Smasher. Enhanced mechanics and flavor. So this is what I was thinking of. Extended mechanics and flavor. So this character here is more like a, um, a, a DM, a sort of driving force behind um, some of the events that can happen. As you can see, pretty OP as well. Now that interestingly, I've messed around with this before and I've managed to like kidnap this character. And, and you know, there's certain events where you can impregnate this character and it's, it's, it's odd. But if you do that, you're basically, there's an event in game and it's really clever that they thought of this. Your character will just be sacrificed immediately if you in any way mess with this character, which is kind of cool. You're playing as a Nuran Asatru Thane. There we go. Nice. Here we are in Nantes. All alone. Actually kind of scared now. This was a terrible idea. Uh, right next to France, obviously, who have quite a lot of dudes. So if you've never played HIP before, the interface is probably one of the biggest changes between that and the base game. Um, do I like it? I don't actually like it more than the base game, I'm going to be honest. I think the way the base game is laid out is a little more user-friendly. Um, if only down to the fact that we all know where everything is. So bear with me if I miss things on here. Um, yeah, that's okay. So build a new fort. Oh shit, the fort slot is there instead. Okay, interesting. Because I've started using forts a lot recently, so that's fair. A lot of wasted space in this one, I will admit. Um, it's more about, you know, they put a lot more emphasis on, like, titles and stuff in this one, which is, you know, understandable. Right. Holy shit, I'm scared. What is our capital like, first and foremost? Uh, we've got 2,000 men, we've got 1,000 prestige. We're a good character. We're, we might be a little bit OP, but again, we've got four marshals, so uh, being surrounded by enemy states, maybe not too good. What do they think of us is the real question. Nine. That's better than I thought, you know? That's not too terrible. Uh, could also send him a gift increase. Charles the Bold by 52 opinion. Wow, that's quite a lot. Um, now, before we actually unpause, there are certain other options you do get to use during uh, during HIP. So we've got things such as customization decisions, as it says there, New World Order, which basically lets you completely alter the map, you know, Shattered World, randomize the rulers, that type of thing. We can convert to a Merchant Republic, which we're not going to do. We can feudalize tribes, so convert, you know, everywhere at this stage. I mean, there's a lot of places that are tribes, basically all of the eastern part of the map. Convert those to feudal. I don't know if that's the, for the best. Uh, it sort of takes away some of the, I suppose, dynamic areas of the map. So I'm not going to be doing that one. Randomized rulers is fairly interesting. Let's take a look. All rulers and their families will receive a new realistic coherent set of random personality, education, and congenital traits with family inheritance chance. The randomizer employs full set of EMF's extended traits. Never play the same game twice. 
Ooh, what do you think? That could be fun. Because right now we've got all your classic sort of... I assume it'll still be Charles the Bold. It'll still be, you know, um, Ludwig the Second there. But instead of these characters having the traits they've got now, it'll be new, right? Fuck it, let's do it. A new face for the nobility. This scenario customization option allows you to give random face to all historical rulers and their families worldwide. They will receive a new, realistic, coherent set of random personality, education, and congenital traits. I'm hoping this will also steal the congenital traits or take it from the... Um, the advanced congenital traits while I've got enabled. Partially my reason I want to do this. Um, I'm fine with my character. Randomize AI characters only. Was that it? Well, that was fucking quick. Impressive. Um, oh, he hates us now. Oh, it's definitely worked. Yeah, no, he is... Uh... Oh, man. Oh, oh, it does work. Look at that. Left-handed. Interesting. So, can we do that again? Can we just keep rolling? No, once you've done it once, that's it. So, there's also lucky rules, which I'm going to turn on. This will give random rulers on the map uh, the trait Lucky, which basically gives them a little bit of a buff. So I'm going to do that. Choose random rulers. So these kings, these dukes, and these counts will all be blessed with luck. So if we take... Uh, was Ivar the Boneless on that list? Uh, he absolutely was. So if we click that one and then go to Ivar the Boneless, he is now Lucky, which gives him, as you can see, pretty significant boost. Now, this isn't inheritable. This isn't congenital or anything like that. When he dies, that's it. It's gone. But it does make the start of the game more interesting, you know. has has unique realms rise up. Because I don't want to do... I, I was kind of tempted to do the whole Shattered World thing, but I thought it would be too much of a radical departure. Whereas this is kind of a nice way to uh, let the game drive itself, I think. Um, can we also make ourselves a lucky ruler? Not that I probably would. No, I can't. We can convert to a merchant republic, though. Um, maybe not, huh? Right. Okay, what else have we got? Employment decisions, loading decisions. So that's it in terms of customization. So when we unpause, those will be taken away. Let's get ourselves set up. Welcome to CK2, everyone. Hastine of Nantes, you can be my marshal. I love the idea that maybe Hastine conquered this place and we just talked our way. Hey, we're a better ruler than you, Hastine. Maybe you could uh, give, up the, give, up the, give up the throne so you, my friend, can continue conquesting and fighting. And he was like, of course, because he's... Uh, oh, he's apparently quite astute, though. Effective artifacts. They've added a new icon for that. It's kind of cool. He's got a like, yellow party hat there. It's kind of nice. Um, what have we got going for us? No bloodlines, no treasury, no kills. So these are where all of those are located. That's nice to know. Uh, makes kind of sense. Where are Sway and Antagonize on this interface then? So they are over in this little side box here. Okay, that's that's an interesting design choice. Fair enough. And again, a lot more of it is based around titles. You know, they put a big, big emphasis on that. Hence, this whole area of the screen being used for just titles. Um, and, you know, claims are a lot more obvious as well. Some parts of it I can see are... I don't know. So, some parts of it I like, some parts of it I don't. I think minor modifiers are going to be kind of difficult to keep track of, especially because in, you know, Holy Fury, they get out of hand very, very quickly. What societies have we got? The Wolf Warriors. That's it. Okay. I guess when we reform, we'll have uh, more options to join those things. Uh, I mean, do we want to join the Wolf Warriors? We're pretty crappy, but it might be a good way to help round off our character's worst trait. Konunga Halfdan of Jorvik of the Wolf Warriors. So this is Halfdan White Shirt. Greets me with a brief nod. Another recruit, huh? To join our ranks. You will need to prove yourself, boy. The man says gruffly, folding his arms across his chest. Sure, let's do it. Let's fight, and we're obviously going to lose this, but it will get us into the society. What does that give us? Month of Prestige, Jewel, Survivor, Lifetime of War. So that gives us um, new events on the field of battle, and we can go Berserk. Give us yourself the Berserker trait. That might help round us off a little bit. You know, it would be sacrificing some diplomacy for some Marshal, but I didn't quite realize our Marshal was as terrible as it is. A fight for glory, huh? We're going to lose that one. Without a shadow of a doubt, we're going to get absolutely annihilated. Yeah, what a shocker. Cracked ribs and wounded as well. We should be fine. I mean, Otter Smasher, not named for his smashing abilities, I'll be honest with you. Um, so what do we want to go for to start off with here? Honestly, I normally go for business, but as I recall, the business focus these days is actually uh, intrinsically tied to your monthly balance, isn't it? So when you debase... So you used to always pick business playing as tribal because when you debase the mint, 100 gold is the equivalent of like, let's be honest, like 10 years worth of income for a, um, not including raids, just, just straight up, you know, monthly balance for a tribal society, but now it's not so relevant. Um, a monthly balance is still crap. I'm going to take that and see if they've made any alterations to it. It's still not a bad focus. Um, it's not like we need any more diplomacy, so I'm not going to go for rulership. Oh my god, our personal combat is minus 16. Minus 16. Charitable gives minus 3. Why? That doesn't make any goddamn sense. I'm a charitable man, so I can't use a sword? Anyway, um, Jewel Shield made in Survival Lifetime War go Berserk. That seems pretty good. Oh, we made friends with uh, Bjorn Kettleson. There's no shame in acknowledging a worthy opponent. Thank you. We could have said we don't want uh, to be mocked like that and also made an enemy, which seems like a bad idea. Oh my god, there's so many ambitions. Holy shit. All right, let's pause a second. Um, create a treasury. Probably not a terrible plan. Make a friend. Uh, strengthen the astral religion. Currently below 30%. 
Obviously, reforming the faith is going to be on the list of things to do. Uh, along with forming the UK. That's something that I've never done that I've been threatening to do for quite a while. So I think we'll do that one. Get married. Become the king of Brittany. That seems like it could be fairly difficult. They are unified here, aren't they? He's only got 1,900 men, though. He's only got 1,900 men. And honestly, this is this would, by grabbing that, safely get us away from France. Because I don't think... Well, they don't even have holy war casters spell. I say only, as if that's any sort of defense. Um... Just strengthen ourselves against France, which is definitely our our number one enemy right now. They've only got 7,300 men. I kind of forgot what early CK2 was like, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, we could take that dude immediately, right? 1,900 versus our 2,200. Plus, we've got... Um, we could have some good commanders. What can we do here? Um, we could just conquest a single province. I mean, it's not going to give us a huge amount, but it's better than nothing, right? We, we can take his capital. Oh, shit. We've got a very slight border with his capital there. And obviously his capital is most likely going to be his best province. I will just double check, though. Um, basing this on, you know, taxes, supply, that type of thing. Oh, you know what? It's really not. Honestly, this province is better. Um, oh, this province is better still. Look at this one. Um, yeah, ideally we want to take this one, which I can't I can't read the font. I have no idea what that is supposed to say. Um, Gwened. There we go. That's supposed to say Gwened. I can kind of see it. I, I, I can kind of see it. I might replace this font at some stage, because I don't know about you guys, but that's fairly unreadable to me. Um... Yeah, that would be not a bad one to grab. It seems like it's quite powerful. 300 and... What's their total levy size in here? This one. Uh, 367. What about this one? Uh, more troops in the capital. This one's got more taxes, more supply, though. I might go for the capital province. Why not? If we, we might as well make this count. And again, this is, our, this is our slow, meticulous, careful playthrough. So I feel like I have to stick to that. Become Duke. Seems like it might be a sensible idea. Obviously, get married should be our first port of call here because that's the easiest one to fulfill. Wow. Okay, so we've got a lot of people that have taken on the um, the various traits here. It's nice that that's worked. I think that's really cool because that's what I was kind of hoping for. So, one of the traits added by the mod is called Brilliant, which is essentially a very, very rare step above Genius. You would rarely expect to see it. The only downside is it also conflicts with Brilliant Strategist. Uh, so finding someone with Brilliant can be fairly difficult. I might rename it, as I've done before, just to make it easier to find on this list. Um, if we sort by, like, Diplomats. So we've got someone who's a genius. Um, so it, it just looks like genius, but it's kind of like a gold glow to it. So if anybody sees it, let me know. Uh, like that one, for example. She's she's Brilliant, but she's way too far away. God damn it. Okay, let's sort by Diplo range to start off with. Uh, Diplo range, yes. Um, generally not sorted by... Oh my god, why are they all warriors? Why are they all warriors? Like every single... Oh, there's like one intrigue person there. Oh, of course they're all warriors because they've got brilliant strategist. This kind of implies to me that the only person here with brilliant is this woman. Um, there's no way in how she'd join our call, right? Yeah, no, her dad is a uh, is a count there. He'll say no. What if we invite her to court? No, false religion. Base reluctance is actually fairly small. We can send her a gift. Invite to court? Still no. Um, if we buy a favor, we unfortunately can't force her to court though because her dad is... Um, a ruler. Plot to kidnap. 72%. I forgot how much more plot power we're going to have. Just based on the fact that people are going to like us more. So they're going to want to join the plots. Try and kidnap her then. If she won't marry us, we'll try and kidnap her. Because she is an incredibly good character. Yeah, so unfortunately it's just, you know, all brilliant strategists here. Let's try genius instead. Um, okay, we do have some genius people that want to join our court. Which is pretty fantastic. Um, let's invite those immediately. And again, Another part of where, you know, being the diplomat comes into play is we get a choice, our choice of whoever the hell we want. You know, we're going to have a lot of people wanting to join our court. Right, so let's get those two. It's a good start. You know, obviously two genius wives slash concubine. Um, welcome, Ag Agniska. I have no idea if that's how you pronounce that. And then wait for the other one as well. So what are your stats like then? Um, we've got Gerda or Agniska. Gerda is fairly well-rounded. Good stewardship though. Um, I'm going to mark you special interest for now. Uh, let's take a look at Agniska. Um, yeah, Gerda is better. Sorry. Uh, take his concubine. Boom. Uh, let's go back to... Oh, I don't really like this either, unfortunately. Um, where, where are my characters of special interest yet, though? Am I blind? Characters of special... Oh, there we are. Wow, this is, this is a weird layout. It's going to take me a little bit getting used to. Let's marry Gerda. Um, Otter and Gerda. Together till the end. Do you want to gain 10 gold or gain 13 prestige? My god, you drive a hard bargain. Um, I'll take the... Shit, that's a terrible choice. I'll take the gold. Why the hell not? There we go. And we will try and kidnap the brilliant woman as well, just because... Oh, man. We actually might be able to do it, too. That's cool. Right. Let's send some gifts out. Let's try and get this woman kidnapped, just because she has the brilliant trait. That's that's the whole reason I'm doing this. It's so powerful. All we've got to do is get one character with it. It's plus six to everything. Um, and it might also have some other bonuses, too. I imagine, like, Vassal Opinion. 
Battle opinion plus five, plus six with everything. It's like a step of genius. Very rare to inherit though. But if we manage to collect um, a harem, uh, I think is the right word, of women with the genius trait, or the, or the, the whatever it is, brilliant, which I'm going to rename. Super genius, we'll call it, or something like that. Uh, that will help out a lot. That, that's just going to be such a massive bonus. Put the ambition to get married. What's next then? Um, I feel like we should probably take it incrementally. So maybe go for become duke, and then after that become king. Um, size of domain. So we can't become a duke just by conquering one more province. So I guess that's probably the next best choice. Um, upholds his pledge of peace for 15 years, waging no offensive wars. That's going to be a no from me. Win holy war, win a war. I mean, that one would also work. Gain one marshal. Oh, shit. I feel like that's more valuable than gaining the... Ah, oh, saying that, the one stewardship. What's one marshal going to give us? Well, it's still going to make us a crap commander. Um, whereas the one stewardship is actually fairly measurable. Be seen publicly as pious. We've got some really cool traits here. Develop personal combat. Might not be a bad plan. Change province culture. Not too bad. Stewardship will be restored one point. Gain an additional one stewardship. What does that mean? What does that mean? Stewardship will be restored one point. I assume that just means we're... I have no idea. Um, oh, maybe because it's a different culture we lose a stewardship? I have no idea. Anyway, who knows. Um, convert a province. We've got to see the Round Prosper become the king of Brittany. That's something for later. I think, obviously, I think the order we're going to do it in is something like increase size of domain, become duke, become king, and that order. Probably not a bad idea. Um, or we could say have son, but, I mean, that gives us 10 piety, whereas I think this is a little more valuable. So let's go the size of our domain. I want to grab... Which one was it? I think we want to take the capital, which is... Um, Poor uh, Hoet, which is ac actually how you pronounce that. You might not believe me, but that is 100% accurate. Right. Nearby Catholic rulers might ask to join Doug Solomon in defense of their faith. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> kind of forgot that was a thing. Are France busy? France are busy. Who are they busy fighting? Oh, nice. They're fighting Lothair the Fifth. Right. Okay, that's fine. The Holy Roman Unification War. They are too busy to come and help out this random dude. Incredible. Should we just do it? Should we roll the dice? See how we end up? Fuck it. Poor Hoet. Mine. This is, this is mine now. Um, we'll raise our personal levies as well. Now, here's the thing I'm, I'm going to complain about. Hey, you're leading troops, idiot. You've got to marshal. Not today. That's a terrible idea. Right, there we go. I think this should be fairly easy. Um, where's... Oh, shit. Have I not set up anything else? Yeah, no. Here we go. Right, designated region. Everybody loves us, which is obviously incredible. Um, Castine of Nantes. Oh, he has a rare artifact. Does he now? Does he have any... Uh... Could you guys hear that? Oh. Well, that's different. There's like a little... Hang on. Shut up. Well, that's new. I, I quite like that. Um, anyway. If we can kill off his son, we can inherit whatever the hell he's got, artifact-wise. Uh, Mjolnir. Oh, he's got Mjolnir. He's got fucking Mjolnir. Uh, as in Thor's hammer. Um, that would be massive. I mean, in terms of size, but in terms of us gaining that. Um... I may have to kill your son, Ragnar Heistin's son. Um, luckily, we have good, um, you know, good, good likeness. Good likeness? Is that the right word? Everybody likes us is what I'm getting at. I didn't, how the, so this is generally dished out randomly to random Norse characters. The fact that this dude in our court has got it is incredible. I would like that. I would like that very much, Hastin of Nantes. Um, let's, let's start the plot to, to kidnap Dura. Um, see how that goes. Oh, shit. I need to set up commanders first before we impose genius. Um, oh, these people are terrible. Right, let's have... Why can't Hastin be a commander? Did I make him a marshal instead like a fool? Yes. Um, okay, come back. I need you to be a commander instead, my dude. Uh, there we go. Hastin, and then... Surely there's someone better. Surely you can do better. Let's see what we can find. Uh, join court. Yes, we'll sort by marshal. Um, preferably man. Whose man's is this? Um, you know what? There aren't many good commanders, are there? 16 is not terrible. Um, 14, also not too bad. Better than what we've got, let's put it that way. Um, sure, we'll hire those two then and sack the rest. My reputation is ruined. Oh no, the plot to kidnap this random woman was found out about. What a, what a shame. <laughs> Who cares? It's still, it's still going though. Um, where is she? Should we send a spy master there as well? She is at court in Gabez. Gabez, Gabes. A court in Gabes. Um, you're terrible. See, I'm sacking you in favor of my wife. Build a spy network in Gabes, wife. Thank you. Don't build a spy network in Gabe's wife. I'm saying, wife, please build a... Yeah. Um, good. Where are my commanders, though? They seem to be taking a long time to get here. All right, there we go. And let's uh, go ahead and sack one of those crap people. So who have we got? Vincent, I'm sorry, you're terrible. Oh, this dude is pretty good. Right, you're hired. Um, and let's get you on a flank there. And if we get someone else, Dag is here. Is he? Dag is here. Um, 14, he'll do. Holmgar, you'll do. Sorry, Dag. 
wasted your time a little bit, my friend. Um, why? Britain, Holmger? Are uh, they on my council? Holmger is my... God damn it. Holmger. Right, okay. Now we'll put him on the... There we go. Okay, that's a pretty decent army. I'm thinking we kill off some of their troops, because this is getting a little bit out of hand. Um, so let's go and take out that army to start off with. Peace be with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, okay. This is going to be a great start. Very, very easy to kill them. Perfect. Oh. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> he was captured in battle as now my prisoner. Sacrifice him. Sacrifice him to Odin? No. I'm not I'm not risking it, honestly. My dude is not the warrior the warrior lord. We just want to gain some land to start with it. Let's not push our luck that much. This is a very difficult start. I don't want to go too crazy with it. Right, let's give away some provinces here. Nice, good start. Two out of seven domain size as well. I didn't mention that, but that's pretty massive. Chris size of domain. Look at that. Easy peasy. Right, next we will go for I guess become a duke. That seems like the most sensible next option. So what is our duchy? Oh. It's the Duchy of uh, Brittany there. The entire goddamn thing. Oh, that seems fair. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Well, so that's going to be the equivalent of becoming a king. Although, I suppose you would have to become the Duke before you became the king. So, it doesn't matter too much anyway. Nice. Are these reinforcing? No. So, let's not waste any more of these troops unnecessarily. We could go ready into France with them. Seeing as we're not doing anything else at all. Probably better than just leaving them kicking around, right? They might as well bring in some gold here. And if we do do it near the capital, that way we can quickly retreat them out. Oh my god, we can assault it down. Like, we can actually burn the place down as well. Oh, that's incredible. Oh, sweet. This is going to be some pretty easy gold. Uh, Godi Halmar of St. Malo claims he would be a better chancellor than Alderman Kol and petitions that he should be given the title of the County of Neoned. Um, oh, Chancellor of the County. I was going to say, how day. Um, I mean, he's not wrong, but... Oh, shit. He's also a vassal. Um... Sure. All right. Welcome aboard. Why the hell not? We might as well try and keep our vassals on side a little bit. Not that it matters too much, but perform statecraft for me, my dude. Right. Okay. If we can burn this down, that's going to be a pretty decent amount of gold coming into the treasury immediately. What about castle upgrades? Oh, there's very, very little. I may install Flogie's Tet mod. Um, just based on the fact that I imagine it will be fully compatible with this. I can't see any issues why it wouldn't be. Um, so keep barracks, training ground, jousting lists. Yeah, there's really not much going for us at this stage, huh? Um... I really hate having so little to build. It, 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 it's, it's a little off-putting, really. A keep seems like a fairly good idea. Um, are we going to keep this place for a long time? Is it going to be our capital? I mean, there's no downside to it. Can we build trade posts? Is that something we can do? Uh, what are we looking at? Oh, there are no trade posts. Oh, shit. It's only the Silt Road. Oh, man, that sucks a little bit, huh? I'm so used to playing with trade posts now that... Um, yeah, that's, that's uh, quite a departure from what I'm used to. Okay, fair enough. I didn't realize how long we were playing for. We'll leave it there for today. 37 minutes. Hey, you're welcome. What can I say? I and mean, obviously, you know, that'll make up the crappy little uh, intro where we were designing a character for four years. Thank you all for watching. I hope you guys like this series idea. The Dwemer mod, for those of you interested in that type of thing, should be available hopefully by... I'm going to say Wednesday at the latest. The, the, the Dwemer mod should be out. Episode should be coming out by Wednesday at the latest. Hopefully it'll start tomorrow. But we will wait and see. Again, Wednesday, I think, is when I'm probably going to... I'm putting a hard limit on that, so I'm not constantly adding stuff. Otherwise, I'll just add more and more crap. So, Wednesday at the latest. Plus, it's still in the um, sort of test build of the Elder Kings 2. So, I don't want to push it too far. I don't want to, you know, maybe break it more than I have to there. So, thank you all for watching. Let's give a shout out to the patrons making this series possible. I'm going to leave this music playing because I quite like this music. Zachary Harris, Harik, Sean Thornton, Haydog, Sidini, Tim Bragg, Loris, Michael Mullen, Croesus, Vacuus Bacchus, Josh Lindine, Tesla, Tyler Birch, Jacob Alexander Fenton, Pavis Presley, Asuna Koto, Logan Thorne, Conspired C, Orcs Wolf, Jimbo, Facundo Vasquez, Tom Terry 18, Average Gamer, 419, Escape, and Jackson Whitman. Thank you all for your support at the Insane Tier levels on Patreon. Thank you for making the series possible. Hope you guys like this and, of, I guess, you know, two series of CK2 and Rimworld as well. So you get more for your money's worth again. I mean, it's probably going to drive me insane trying to record three episodes today, but hey, I think, I think it'll be fun. And a big shout as well to Nathaniel Lindbergh, Brennan Montoniak, Euphrates, Jack Allen, Batamus Max, Panther Pearl, Gabriel Vanders, Llewellyn Thomas, Nathan Flores, Yoran DeVries, Haji Demar, Alpha Scuff, Kevin Saunders, Duncan 207, Zet McDougall, Joseph Beard, Jordan Campbell, Harry McGowan, Chris, Hancock, Sir Thor the Swede, Asaro, Nick, Will Wade, Noah Gallimore, Fred Brennan, The Insane Pickle, Adam Person, and I See the Great. That list is insanely long.